So, Dr. Stone fans, we have acquired platinum. Star platinum. JoJo Records. What's good, y'all? My man, Master Sir Hilly, of the Knights of the Round Table of Company 1. Subscribe to the Spin Booth. And we are here with Dr. Stone. Season 3. Now, when it comes to this episode, Karaku had to strike a cute pose. And she did so by striking the Suka pose. So, yes, Senku. Yes, it was. Getting still out here playing games. But this episode was about you know, the two teams doing what they do. We got the team of science as we normally do, but the other team, every time we normally do something like that, the other side have to go outside the normal realm. The spy team, the frustration team. Mm hmm. I say that even though Gen kind of been on that type of time when we was facing this kingdom of might. Let's not forget what this man would do for a bottle of cola. But, anyways, yes, we was able to get the earpiece, the radio. That radio, but you know. Able to communicate. It kind of reminded me of like a headphone, you know what I'm saying? Not a like Bluetooth headphone or anything like that. When you know Game was making the whole argument about it running on batteries or not. You know, headphones don't run on batteries unless you do that Bluetooth shit. The good headphones, I meant. Yeah, wireless phone, you fucked up. But getting back on topic, back in the kingdom of science, well, the science lab, whatever we're calling it now, to help spread communications for spread the messages they were making a rat. And I found it funny how, you know, how the method of making that thing still, you know, there was a, it was very much hands-on, having to wrap that coil around, having to stick those pieces together and stuff like that. While it doesn't necessarily itself require a bunch of manpower, but the way Sinku made it sound by having to make sure it's wrapped tightly and stuff like that a thousand, hundreds, thousands of times, yeah, it would be a good time to have Taiji or Magma around, huh? May not be no heavy duty shit, but it doesn't mean it's a job with small hands. Then again, we have established last week that Gin and Sinku is more ripped than Ginro. Speaking of Ginro, if it can't read or write, I guess. When it comes to, you know, back when the girls, we was doing the infiltrator. There was that big muscle guy that had to be the typical all bronze, no brain dude because he didn't know typical words that he was trying to use. Especially when Amaris was, Amaris was so easily able to trick these guys. And yeah, she's been practicing that act for years, presumably, <laughs> just to try to get to the master. If Gin was trying to point out how these girls are being two faced about it, Gero, we're spies right now. You can try to talk about women all as much as you want, even if you're not one dressed as one. Give it the program. You gotta remember, Kohaku believes in you. And the part about the posture was actually kind of funny. Is that the fact that they do that kind of posture thing normally? When, it, when I saw it, I thought about Mulan, honestly. It's the fact that they did it with Gero. If Gimbo is a no damn well, he now don't want to be there or shouldn't be there in the first place. And he's being the one being honored for not being lazy enough. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> All that stuff you were trying to do with Kohaku for the last two episodes, then you throw Gimbo in there and kind of just be like, nah, he's the new target. Say what you want about the man, but after saving the science lab with Suka's help, yes, you think he would pay at least some of his dues by now. <laughs> and again, he does have a lot of karma coming. Once again, he decided not to learn to read and write, like, made this straight decision not to. And despite having to strike cute poses, when it comes to Kohaku doing Kohaku things, jumping around, flying around in 15 seconds, finding the platinum, using her blood to write messages, or apparently as Gimbal put, draw emojis. <laughs> All doing so by just ripping a piece of her dress off, showing off that panty line. Which is slick was unnecessary, because there was a whole lot of Kohaku ass on display in this episode. That dress doesn't leave too much to the imagination. It kind of makes me think of her sister can see her now. She could be like, girl, what you got on? The tight dress is one thing, but hell, if the rating of this show was up to one, that thing would be damn near see-through. Kohaku, don't fall in the water, girl. Nah, it's for the best. Don't fall in the water. However, though, I gotta be real, my favorite part of this episode was actually when they were trying to decipher Kohaku's meshes. Because there's a specific moment where specific roles had to come into play, but it was kind of just going back and forth. By day, I mean Gin and Sinku. Because yes, Sinku was supposed to decipher the meshes, however, he didn't exactly know what it meant. Which is, I guess, the essence of science to figure out. However, when you have a quote unquote mentalist right there not doing the job, especially since Siku's first presumption was wrong in the first place. Y'all can't put everything on that man every single time. The man built you a rat. Y'all gotta figure something out. Snicker made you a snitch, you guys don't wanna tell him shit. And then again with his mentalist ass talking, going back and forth, you gotta decipher what Kohaku could possibly mean. And he did one of those early Yu Gi Oh moments. And when I say that, it's like, you know, if anybody who watched Yu Gi Oh back in the day, the uncut version where Yami used to tell Joey this, this, and that, these phrases for him to try to figure out. It's kind of weird. Like, Senku, one of the times he does legit need help trying to figure out something. And Gin's playing games with it. Again, I need your help. What's going on here? Hey, Senku, I'm going to give you a hint. Figure it out. I'm grateful, nigga. You ain't getting no more cola. However, quite frankly, it really kind of just drew back to why we came here in the first place. Took his father's father treasure chest with the first team that came back to Earth that wasn't petrified, finding the platinum. And honestly, when you think about it, besides the petrification beam itself, Slick will be a, what would be a support to send a message though. Like, unless the only thing you can really see, like Sakaku having the need to actually send that message back as quick as they got it back, would have been either straight good news or bad news. 
And in this case, if it was bad news, Robert, he fucked, so whatever. Process of elimination. <laughs> Since it had to be some good news, at least we was that one step closer to doing what we need to do. While we are here on a mission right now, trying to infiltrate them, trying to stop the petrification at the same time, we still gotta save the planet. Two main goals are out here in front of us. Stop the problem and solve the issue. Once they get that platinum, they can bring back Ryuzi and bring back the freaking... Damn, I watched all this one piece. I don't know the name of it. What's the person that drives the ship and stuff? Hailsman! I like that nod to Chrome as well, but it came to simply forget out about that plastic bottle. Reminder that Chrome is one of the generals. Yeah, Karaku, you want to have faith in Gero. But guess what? So you got faith in Chrome? Karaku can show off her draws all she wants. Uh, if Chrome could get her sisters. Haha! <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> but yeah, man. Quite frankly, in this season, I don't have 11 episodes. Next episode, the last one. Which episode was this again? I did it for Ancient Madness Bride 10 minutes ago, so. How many episodes does Dr. Stone's season 3 have? I mispronounced it like hell. Oh. Save it for two cores. So we're not done. Legit. I'm gonna let next week tell that story. But hey, we out here. Y'all watch this video, leave a comment. I don't know what you think. Like this video for me. And I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to that spin move. Mm hmm.